This is part 2 of the video about Australia. Check the link in the description box to watch part 1. Just a few hundred miles north, there is another military facility that's mostly underground, near Alice Springs. A large area around the facility is off-limits to people. Again, the government does not communicate what goes on at Pine Gap. Just pay your taxes, but we won't tell you how the money is used. The area is also a no-fly zone. Here is a no-fly zone for drones map of Australia. It kindly tells us exactly where to look if we wish to make interesting discoveries. You can see that hundreds of miles around Pine Gap are off-limits, Southern Australia is mostly off-limits, and the Starford area we just looked at also has limitations, even though there is allegedly nothing to see there. Astonishingly, there appear to be no restrictions for all of Queensland, Northeast Australia. Much has been written about Pine Gap, so I'll take the opportunity to share something that hasn't been written yet. You saw it here first. If you look at Pine Gap on Google Earth closely, you'll soon notice that the Pine Gap roads were built on top of more ancient roadways. An example. Don't see it. Look at the road on the bottom right, and how a barely visible trace of it continues to the bottom left. You can see the same at the top center of the image, with the vague outlines of a more ancient road leading further north. Another example. The symmetric and artificial X symbol in the landscape can be found around the world. You'll see a built-over version of this if you take another look at the Wimmera region. New places being built on top of old ones can be seen around the world, but that's a topic for another video. Hurt Island is an external territory of Australia between Madagascar and the Antarctic. The island is uninhabited. That's because you aren't allowed to go there without permission of the Australian government. Strange. Hurt Island has been assigned its own internet domain ending. Hmm. Why would an uninhabited place have its own internet country code? Shouldn't it be .au for Australia? There are always two popular excuses when places are forbidden. Military or environmental. In the case of Hurt Island, it is claimed that it's for environmental protection that permits are not given, unless for government-run science projects. Similar regulations apply to other islands around Australia, too numerous to list here. As seen on the Google Maps screenshot, Australia is full of national parks. These parks have restricted access and strict rules for stay. Visitors are monitored. There are bans on photography, machinery, or as in the case of Elliot Price National Park, the whole place is banned from visitors. Of course, none of this proves anything anomalous or clandestine. It's conceivable that there are benevolent government officials that simply wish to preserve natural habitats throughout the country. I looked at Elliot Price Natural Reserve for a while on Google Earth and found nothing unusual. But not all natural reserves are that innocent as this next example shows. South of Melbourne, there is a strip of land facing the ocean that is partially off-limits as a national park. Before it was a national park, it was off-limits because of fear of landmines. And before that, it was off-limits because it contained underground military bases. Every decade had another reason why certain places were forbidden. This image is of Nalarbor National Park, vast flatlands along the southern coast of Australia. What's amazing about Nalarbor is that it features no modern roads, except for the highway crossing it, no towns, no trees and no hills, and it looks like it's been flattened by a gigantic iron. It's bizarre that the entire area is a no-fly zone, as there is allegedly nothing to see there. Because the government are the only people allowed to make aerial footage of the region, we'll have to rely on their images. Remember. Even though it's an arid and barren wasteland with no features at all, you mustn't, under any circumstances, fly a drone over it to take pictures. How strange. The reason for the drone ban might be that you figure out that there are perfectly straight lines, not built by modern hand, running through the landscape. They are visible on Google Earth. Examine this photo. Notice anything anomalous. Modern highways were built on top of ancient lines. That's why some highways in Australia are perfectly straight, with no consideration of the natural environment they run across. 
It's a strange way to build a road, unless you wish to make use of an already existing one. You can see that there was something more ancient there, because two other perfectly straight lines run parallel to the highway. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but I suspect that the two additional pathways weren't put there by the people who laid the highway. Here's one of the many boxes of Australia close up. A photo from Air Peninsula at a place that also has drawn no fly restrictions for no logical reason. Bunda Cliffs in the Larbor National Park. This is a map of national reserves and protected areas in Australia. The protection of wildlife is commendable. Maybe I'm wrong to suspect anything different than ecology-mindedness. But I wonder why some of the protected nature reserves coincide with rocket testing ranges and military installations. The problem. Australia is claimed to have been discovered in 1606, I guess we're supposed to ignore the fact that the Aborigines discovered the land long before. But maps between the 1500s and 1770s show us a different Australia. A land that is actually the Antarctic, or attached to the Antarctic. A 1530 map of the world. 1507, Abraham Artelius. A 1687 map. No change in the 1773 map. A 1738 map from Japan. Not only is Australia part of the Antarctic, but Sahara is a lush green land here. History books say that the shape of Australia was unknown until recently. We're meant to believe that ancient map makers got the whole world right to every last detail, but they didn't know Australia. Well, I don't believe that. Alternative explanations. Was there some kind of cataclysmic event that formed the continent of Australia? Or, did Australia belong to enemy territory and was therefore not clearly defined? Or, is Australia still part of the Antarctic, and that's why it is not only the most deadly creatures of any country, but also large fences to ward them off? Here's an interesting thought. Looking at the Japanese map, it's conceivable that Australia split off, or was split off, from the Antarctic at some point. The part that was split off coincides with a strange coastline we see in southern Australia. And perhaps that's why there are so many animals that can only be found in Australia, but nowhere else in the known world. I'll leave you with one last oddity. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, a drone found the exit of this tunnel, but they don't know where the entrance is. As I said, Australia is not what it seems. This video has only begun to scratch the surface of what Australia is, or was. I am certain that looking at Australia from above will literally unearth much more. Knowledge dissemination relies on you, share this video far and wide. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.